Well, I want to welcome everybody to Morning Motivation. Gosh, it's mid-July and um, 15th of July. Woo! How is everybody doing out there? My name is Joan Robison, and some of you may be new to uh, watching Morning Motivation. Here, what we typically do is get our minds right. We start our day with some positive inspiration. Oftentimes we do some breathing. We'll draw some cards. And another thing that we often do is talk around a topic. And this is a community where we don't care how you come like me, just kind of rolled out, (laughs) poof the hair, have the morning coffee going. And Um, we really like interaction here. So we want people to feel that they can come here and there's a place where you can work through a challenge. So it's not, we don't want to act like challenges don't happen. We want to get better at handling those and really closing that gap on fear and working in solution. Uh, So who wants to kick us off? Who's got something they want to share? Maybe but really exciting about how you've been flipping the switch, or maybe you've got a challenge and you want to work through a few things. Who wants to kick us off? I'm going to grab my warm coffee. I just, I just want to share that I've been working through, hi, good morning. I'm Lisa. Uh, yeah. This is my third time here. So I'm, I'm happy to be part of this when I, when I remember and, or am up and at it to get on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, but it's been good. It's been good. I've been appreciating it so much. So thank you. Um, but I, I just, I want to share that this week has been interesting because I am going to be 62 tomorrow. And it's a funny number for me because in my brain, I'm still like 16 and (laughs) it's like, it's really an odd number to be. And I'm trying to work through that number to this, this year. And it's not really a big number, right? It's like weird. I, when I was 50, I felt great. I was just like awesome at 50 and even 55 and even 60. But when the, when COVID hit and all this happened, I went into a different state of uh, feeling. Is that me or her? Feeling older. So just trying to work through the number, I guess, this year. And I don't know if other people have, are stuck on different thoughts of their perspective of their age, or if they, you know, either if they feel too young, or, like I remember being a young mom. So I'm just curious. Yeah, I think that's great. Does anybody else have something they want to share with Lisa besides happy birthday, Lisa? Woo, woo, woo. Thank you. <laughs> anybody? Terry, you might. Yeah, I see Terry gone. Okay. Here. Can you guys hear me? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yvonne, you could go then Terry. I think Terry was going to, yeah, go ahead. Okay. I just wanted oh. to say, so I not get hung up on the number. Oh, w- go ahead. What? Can, I don't know if you can hear me. My earbuds are trouble. I was trying to say not to get hung up on the number that that's just superficial to let it go. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Thanks Yvonne. Terry, go on ahead. Well, and it is only a number. And I can remember when I started in this business when I was 22, and there were people that didn't pay attention to me because I was too young. And they were older, and I was talking about skincare, and they're like, yeah, you know, what do you know about that? Um, And then, you know, fast forward, wow, you know, I'll be 72 on my birthday in September. And um, You do, it it is a true thing that you get treated differently when you're older by some people, not, not by all people, but by some, Um, but what, it it doesn't matter what other people think, you know, it's what we think and, you know, just continuing to strive to 
think the same way. In fact, I, I heard this quote recently by Bob Proctor that I've heard many times, and I'm sure you've all heard this, but for some reason it resonated even more. And it's get to the point where you don't care what other people think. You have to be very concerned with what you think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just had never heard it quite in that same way that because we are thinking all the time, <laughs> like it or not. And, you know, we might be thinking business wise where, oh, if I call that person, you know, she always says no to me or she always blows me off or we can be thinking thoughts about business. And that's normal for all of us. But we also have to be cautious about what we think about ourselves at all times. Yeah. And um, yeah. And, and relating that. that to business and relating that to business. Cause for me, I really, I'm starting a new business. Uh, I'm like on the bottom floor of it. It's only been there like three months. I'm really excited about it, but I feel really like I'm learning a lot for technology. I feel like you know, a lot of these women that are like in their thirties and whatever, they're just doing it all, you know, and I'm, I, it's a challenge to learn technology, um, at my age. And I, again, it's my age. I shouldn't say that. Right. But that's what goes in on my brain. So I'm trying yeah. to, but, but the positive part of it is, well, I'm learning a lot and this is good for me. So, well, yeah. And the more we learn, the more we use our brain, the more our brain right. stays as a functional part of our body. So exactly. every new thing we have to learn, you know, the exactly. better it is. You look amazing. You're beautiful and you have a great spirit about you. I wouldn't even think about your age. Well, thank you. Thank you. I try to be positive most of the time, but then it's funny, this, this birthday sort of was weird. So I'm trying to work through it. So I'm here to just hear some positive things and try to work through and hear other people's um, stories and what they're working through or not, or, or, or praise as well. So. <laughs> well, one thing I was going to say, because I'm, you know, 54, I'm going to be 55 July 31st. And um, I think what goes through my mind when it comes to age is time is something that we can't get back. Mm-hmm. So I find that it's, well, I have found in the last few years that I think about time a little differently than I did in my thirties or forties. And it's almost like rather than now, this is just me though. Right. So my thing with age is I'll look around and I'll think you you just don't know. I mean, you, we have today and I might get a little hung up in my mind about, well, gosh, you know, how many people live to 80, 90, a hundred. I mean, you get where I'm going. So I get a little in this mode at times, but what I think it's also caused me to do is define what's most important to me Mm. and really look at if I just had today, would I stop? Would I make the time, you know, to help a stranger? If I only had today, would I be proud of the way I live today? Mm. You know, for me. And so I try to take, because if I go too big, I'm way out ahead of myself. And I, I mean, I don't know the future. I don't think any of us do. We only know what we have right now in this moment. And it's caused me to be more purposeful and present in the now. Because I realize that's all I have. Um, And as far as, you know, just thinking about age and whatnot, I always say to my son, I'm like, God, don't you like it that you got a mom that looks kind of young and still good in a two piece? And he just rolls his eyes, you know, like. (laughs) (laughs) So I like to make some jokes about that kind of stuff, too. But, you know, it, it, it is funny, though, because I just find that it's caused me to think a little bit more. And when I start thinking a little more, I say, okay. How can this thought process benefit you? And that's what I've done is I've said, it'll benefit me if I become even more purposeful today. 
So that's just a thought, Lisa, to good leave thought. with you. That's a good thought for all of us, right? If we yeah. all can be in that mode. Yep. And I, I will, I can be very upfront with everybody here. Many, many years of my life, I spent working toward that, you know, I'll be happy then. Mm -hmm. And then I could look back and say, you know, whatever about that. And so I never was living right here now. And that was kind of a rude awakening for me. It was kind of like, wow, you don't really live present. You're either bitching about your past, let's say, or you're going to be happy when you get there. And I realized the quality of my life during some of those years was not nearly what it could be. So learning from that and moving forward causes me to be more purposeful in the present. So whatever that's worth to everybody. Um, Yeah. So you're welcome and happy birthday to you tomorrow. Have a good piece of like cake that you really like. Yeah. Yeah. Something. Okay. All right. Who else? Who else has got something? Maybe let's chat a little bit about, I don't know how you're flipping the switch, or maybe there's a personal challenge or a business challenge. What do you guys want to talk about before we go into some breathing? One or two more shares. I can go. Mm -hmm. Um, Hi. Um, I had a, a disappointing week, both business and professionally. Um, And, you know, as far as um, my side business, it was, um, I was getting ready to sign up someone and then they signed with something, someone else. Um, So, you know, and they called and said, so I still want to be friends and still want to, you know, collaborate. And, and we had been friends and she's a social seller. So she, she should have known. But anyway, so long story short, you know, that really kind of took the wind out of my sails. So, um, yeah, I've been studying for a long time about living in the present moment. So it was just a reminder to um, live in the moment. And I started to remember um, that this year I'm starting to connect with so many like-minded people. And I've made friends with Terry and um, Anne, who's on, and it's just so wonderful. So, um, you know, but flip the switch and focus on those positive things. It's hard not to be disappointed business wise, but personally, things are going in the right direction for me. So just working on them. And Tammy, I have to say, what a healthy way to look at it. And I want to commend you for that. Thanks for bringing it up and sharing it with the group, because here's what I heard. You know, gosh, I talked with somebody, uh, you know, and they ended up signing somewhere else. It was someone you knew in the past. So it felt it probably hurt a little bit like, Mm -hmm. ouch, right? I spent some time here. I invested. But here's what I love that you said. And I don't know if you thought deeply about this, but it came to me immediately. You said, I'm connecting with some new folks. You know, Anne is on your team from Denmark. Terry is uh, a regular here in the community. She's had 40 plus years of experience. She lives in Florida. Guys, remember, we attract the frequencies that we put out. So Tammy, you might not be in that frequency of that woman anymore. Does that make sense? You guys, I didn't think think about that. Yeah. So it may be, and I'm, I'm again, I don't, you know, this is just a thought, another perspective, another way to look at it. You feel the disappointment, but I want to ask you all, how many times have you ever had disappointment in your life? And two or three months later, you go, thank God. (laughs) <laughs> get where I'm going. Yeah. You could be dodging a bullet, Tammy. This gal could be somebody that could link on to you that could weigh you down. Maybe. I don't know. It could, it could be something different, but sometimes when things don't work out the way my limited brain is right in the human, 
I go to the spiritual Mm -hmm. and I say, show me why that didn't work out for me in that way. Help me give more meaning to the circumstance. Allow me to feel right. Because I think it's so important to feel the feelings. We don't want to stifle our feelings because then that just creates angst and it builds up and we become resentful, but we go into it with a, with more of a, what went well with this circumstance and what might I do different, but most importantly, what did I learn? What did I learn? Now I'm going to go to another level, Tammy, for you. Now I'm going to, I'm going to tell you guys something. And I, Tammy, I don't know your circumstance, you know, fully or anything, but I want to share with you guys something. You know, I talk about, um, you know, different things that have happened with me in the business. I have had similar things happen, you know, um, where maybe I was introduced to somebody along the way and I, I did maybe, let's just say I did a follow-up. I'm thinking of this one gal in particular number of years ago. And I might've followed up again a couple months later. And then that was probably kind of it. And about six months into it, she went with another gal. And I remember thinking like, wow, that's kind of, you know, geez, that kind of stung. Now hear me on this. I sat and I thought about it and I thought, okay, Joan, what did you do that was good? Okay, well, you talked with her quite a bit. You followed up a time or two. Could you have done something different? Yeah, I could have set more of an appointment with her to discuss again. And then I say, okay, what else could I have done? Well, I could have been more urgent with her. Do you get what I mean? Like she was in, in the big pool of everything, you know, it's, it's one person. And I felt like I attended to her needs in what she wanted, but as urgent as I am, my urgency sort of wasn't there on the third follow-up. Do you guys get where I'm going with this now? I don't know. Like I said, I don't know Tammy's circumstance. Tammy might've been on it, on it, on it, but here's what I recognized. There was a lesson for me in there that I didn't see until later. And I'm going to share this with you. I'm glad that it happened the way it did. (laughs) If you know what I mean, because I see this particular gal and bless her heart, but I understand why it probably wasn't a good fit with me. Does that make sense? That's why I brought that up to Tammy. Because guys, we attract what we put out there. See, I'm all about working quickly, acknowledging the problem, feeling the problem, and getting into solution. You guys all want a little more of that or you wouldn't be here. Do you get where I'm saying what I'm saying? So we attract what we put out. So you guys are attracted to the call because you want to get a little bit better at being you. You want to get a little inspiration. You want to get a little motivation. So I find today that I attract a very different person to the business and even friendship wise than I did five years ago, 10 years ago, and 20 years ago, because I'm a different person. You get what I mean? We evolve into different people, don't we? We're the same soul. Don't get, don't get me wrong. But you ever look back on your life and go like, oh, wow, quite a, quite a gal there in your 20s, Joan. Woo! You know what I'm saying? God, I just drool. Anyway, I think some Botox got funky on one of my lips. I'm noticing my language. (laughs) Anyway, do you guys get where I'm going? Sometimes the disappointments that we feel initially, (laughs) thanks, Holly, have greater meaning. So look for it a little bit later and look for your part. So we have to be big enough to look for our part, right? And accept it and 
ask yourself those questions. So I'm going to give you, if you're writing it down, hey, Trace. Oh, I love seeing you here. I haven't seen you for a while, baby. All right. Write these questions down, guys. What went well and what could I do different? Those are two questions I ask myself several times a day. They're self-evaluating questions that will empower you to be more of who you're created to be. Most people don't stop to evaluate themselves. And it's just a real honest look at ourselves. And sometimes you're going to go, you know what? I really handled that not so great. Now, sometimes you're going to go, I couldn't have handled it any better. And you realize three months down the road, you dodged a bullet. You get, you get where I'm going. Sometimes God's knows are your protection. Just keep it in mind. All right. Now I'm going to share something with you guys. This just came to mind because whew, yesterday I had a very interesting day of travel. And um, I want to just express to you, some of you are going to start laughing because I've shared uh, a story about one time I had an attitude and went into Lululemon and the gal like shut me down like a, you know, like she shut her front door and never to return. And I realized as I walked away, you know what, Joan, you were an absolute little shit, you know, like I was, I had a bad attitude. And it, boy, did it come right back at me, right? So it happened again. Can you believe it? (laughs) It happened again. I was traveling and you don't know me in this way because you're not walking with me in my life, right? Meaning like day to day. But I tend to think I can do one more thing and often will run a little bit behind or, you know, I run rather quickly. (laughs) That's a nice way to put it. So I left for the airport. I get to the airport. I get in the line and I get up there and my ticket is, you know, 7A or something like this. And the gal says, we've changed your seat. Now, remember, there's a whole lineup of people behind me. Okay, now just listen to my behavior because I'm admitting it and I'll tell you what I did that was a little different. Um, I said, she says, we've changed your seat to 21A. And I went, I said, 21. Oh, I said, I don't want that. And she looked at me and she goes, well, then you can step over there. And I said, well, wait a minute. I said, why did they change my seat? And she said, probably to keep a family together. (laughs) And I went, Oh, okay. I said, she goes, but just step over there and and you can get a new, a new seat. And I said, no, no, I'm fine. No, no, I'm fine. Like just almost just like that. No, no, I'm fine. You know, just like little attitude. I get on the plane. I sit down and do you know that I sat there and I thought, you know, why'd you have to do that? Why do you have to take your rushed attitude And, you know, kind of do this to that gal. So I paused. I want you guys to hear me. And I sent her gratitude, spiritual gratitude, right? I said, you know what? She was very nice. Thank you for your kindness. All right. Guess what happens? I'm owning my own behavior thinking if I could get up and go out there and apologize, I probably would. And in she comes walking down the aisle and she looks over at me and says, Ms. Robison. And I said, yes. And she said, what's your mileage number? I'm going to give you some miles. And I went, you know, I, <laughs> no, now I'm, there's people, you know, like there, I'm in a plane, a sea of people. And I said, you know, I just have to apologize to you. I said, I was a little short up there and that isn't who I want to be. And she went, oh no, we should have asked about giving your seat away. And I realized you didn't know that, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I said, nonetheless, you know, I I apologize. You were very nice. And now you're giving me miles. She said, "Mm -hmm." now I'm just going to tell you, I believe 
that had I not thought about it and really sent, I sent her frequency of love and gratitude. Do you see what I mean? I believe that that's why she came back. And probably because Alaska Airlines, I believe, is like the Nordstrom of the skies. They're always on. They're always great with service. But here's what I want to say. That was above and beyond. Nowadays, most people are not kind to people that aren't kind to them. That's who I want to be. I want to be that light in people's lives. You see what I mean? And she showed me who I want to be. So I'm just owning it. And you guys know that on occasion, this is, uh, this can happen to all of us, right? Because we can be what, Roberta? Hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. And we have to halt. Right, Holly? <laughs> so we all get sometimes what I call schooled when we get into these moments, right? And it's refreshing to kind of know that you do not have to, whoops, mute that just for a sec, Jane. You do not have to, um, well, let me say it like this. You can always revisit even, even sending love or light to people. Even if you don't do it in the physical where you get up and go out there and verbalize it, you can do it in another way like that. So keep it in mind. All right. Okay. Jane, I muted you. You were going to share there. I think go ahead. Come off now. Sorry. No, actually I wasn't. I was getting onto my laptop from my phone and my phone's still mm. going. Sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. Sounds good. Anyone want to share? Oh, Roberta. So glad to see you, sweetie. Wait, Roberta, we can't hear you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And when I was able to still work and I was at Bass Pro, yeah. I would close a lot with the same manager. So we became quite close. And he would go, Berta, you need to take a break and eat something because you're getting very hangry. <laughs> right? Getting hangry. Yeah. How, how many has that happened to? That's the truth. And you all probably rest connect your true essence, your source, your kindness, right? Many times. Oh, am I frozen? Jeez. Are you guys? I'm frozen, wasn't I? Was I frozen or could you hear me? You were frozen. I think you're not allowed to move around. <laughs> And you know, well, you know what I think? I'm not allowed to heat my coffee because when the microwave goes on, the signal goes out. Speaking of frequencies, look at that. Isn't that interesting? That interrupts the connection. All right. The bottom line is, keep in mind, guys, when we are well-rested, when, when you're starting your day, you're going to have less tendency to lose your cool because you're fresh. So just think about that. Typically in the afternoon, right? That's when we can be kind of vulnerable to some of the things that really aren't that big of a deal, but we can wane in our humanness around kindness and, you know, just our reasoning and our mental. So just, just keep it in mind. All right. So do we want to take a, a minute or two and breathe here this morning? Would you guys like that? All right, good. So what I want you to do is I want you to get into a place where you can sit up really straight. Uh, Roberta, you can just keep right there. Oh, she's going to sit up. All right. And I want you to kind of think of having like a little pole here. 
So you're very straight up and down. Get your feet grounded. If you can take your shoes off and put your feet square on the floor, that would be better. I want you just for this particular thing, if you can, and I know you can, to not look at your cell phones and not be on your computer, like answering somebody. I want you to just take this time for you, just about two to three minutes, fully present, just for you. Okay. And I want you to stretch your neck, give yourself some, just, you know, couple morning stretches, go to the left, go to the right. I'm going to go paddle boarding after this too. Okay. Stretch way up. Okay. And then come down. I like to open my hands on the top of my thighs to receive. And what we're going to do is we're going to fill ourselves with light. Okay. So it's a visualization. It's a breathing that's going to help you set your day right. And here's what I want you to know. You can do this anytime on your own. And by the way, I've got just a short little breathing um, recording that'll go up probably by Monday. So there's like a five minute, yeah, a five minute little thing that'll be on YouTube and it'll just say, start your day right with breathing. It'll be kind of a short, but that way you can take that link and you could do it anytime you want. Some people were requesting just a guided breathing. Okay. All right. So I want you to close your eyes and I just want you to get comfortable with your own breath. Okay. So I'm going to let you just for about 30 seconds, scan your body as you breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. So open up your mouth and let it out. Now I want you to take a few breaths on your own and just get comfortable with your body. All right. And as we begin, I want you to begin breathing from the low belly and drawing slowly in your breath through your nose, all the way up, filling your lungs. And you should be coming to about the count of six to eight, depending on your, you know, slow of your intake. So just practice getting that breathing down and letting out through your mouth. Okay, so we're not going to go in and out through the nose, just through the mouth for a moment. Now, what I want you to do is visualize yourself stepping up your consciousness. So more awareness of your day, where you are, of what you want to hold on to, and what you want to release. So now, as you draw in, I want you to visualize yourself breathing there, and a beautiful golden bowl is placed right in front of you. The angels place that there, God, whatever you want to believe. They place that there for you to let go of any fears, any limiting beliefs, any cares and worries or to-dos of the day. I want you to place them in the bowl. And as you begin breathing in, I want you to take a scan of your body. See if there's any aches, any pains you want to put in the bowl, anything that's not serving you. And let's take one more breath in and one more forceful breath out, visualizing all of those things going into the bowl. (sighs) 
Now I want you to visualize yourself stepping up one more step into a beautiful golden waterfall. It's the most brilliant light that you've ever seen. And that light just feels like love and warmth. And as you step into that waterfall, the light pours down in through your crown, on down through your neck, all through the chakras from your crown to your root. And I want you to take another deep breath in. This time as you let out, you're going to close your lips together and you're going to find your rhythm. Shoulders that are up tight. Let's concentrate on pulling your shoulders down and just settling into your space, grounding you to the earth. And as that light continues to pour down and illuminate you, you become a magnet of attraction. People wonder what's a little different about her. She seems so happy, so peaceful, so joyful. Continue to pull in that light through breathing it in, pushing it down through your entire body. Light splits at the legs, goes down, wraps around your knees, into your shins, down through all your feet, right down to the balls of your feet, grounding you to the earth. And As you begin drawing back in, you're pulling in some of that beautiful earth energy. Frequency of the earth is really powerful. And we want to be in right here, grounded in our bodies for the day. Now I want you to think of an intention or something that you would like to focus on. It could be a tangible thing. It could be an emotional state. Some of you are just going to keep breathing, enjoying this moment. Some of you have a goal or something that you really want to focus around. And it can be anything personal. could be business. For me, it's an attitude. I'm around a lot of family this weekend. And I want to show up in a certain way. Take a moment and just continue to breathe that in. Seeing yourself bright and illuminated. Now I want you to take a moment and let's seal everything in that we just did. So I want you to take another breath in. And as you let it out, I want you to bring your hands over your head, reach tall, and bring the hands together down in a prayer position in front of your breastbone there. And I want you to give gratitude to yourself for investing in you. Most people don't take this time to fill their own cup. They run ragged. Not you, not today. I want you to give yourself the love and gratitude that you deserve and give yourself a little bow. I want you to thank God or however you want to do that for your day, for this day. And as you commit to being fully present here and now, I want you to open your eyes and notice how good you feel. All right. Doesn't that feel good? Yeah. Yeah. No. (laughs) Okay, guys, you can do this at your home as well. Anytime. I always would share things, especially when I had littles, you know, the little kids around. 
boy, I would sometimes pop into my walk-in closet and hide under some gunny sack dresses. You know, those are like old dresses I wore in high school. Like, I don't know why I still had them, but I did. They would be dusty and I'd be like, <coughs> but I'd be hiding under a dress or sometimes I'd pop into my kitchen pantry and shut the door and, you know, just a little different. I've also been known to be in a public restroom, a little bit extra time, come out. My kids are like, what are you doing in there? I said, wouldn't you like to know, right? <laughs> All the different things. So remember, your breath is so powerful. You are powerful. And I love the fact that so many of you showed up here today. And I want you to think about who you can invite, who you know that you can invite for Monday, because you know somebody that needs this just like you do. And we want to just keep spreading that message of kindness, of love, and of light. All right. Who wants a card? I think we got to give Lisa one because it's her birthday. I saw Anne and I saw Yvonne. So we'll, let's just do some cards. Let's have some fun with this. All right. Woo. All right. Jeez, this card's a little tattered. My cat bit it, I think. Okay. So here we go. Ready, Lisa? I choose to clean up areas of my life and make room for new. What wow. I love that one for birthday. Isn't that okay. kind of fun? Interesting one. That's a great one for me. All right. Let me read it. I can create space for new growth. Wow. And exciting opportunities by cleaning up anything in my life, big or small. There is a time and space for things I love. Like a buffet, my choices are endless. Flip the switch from what does not serve you to creating habits that do day one or one day you get to choose. Ooh, do you like that one? You know, that's point on because actually my husband's wanting to redo our kitchen and I'm more like, let's keep everything the way it is. I like it just the way it is. I like my little dish just here, my little dish there. And now everything's being disrupted. Everything's in boxes and, and I'm trying to declutter and let go. I really am. So that's perfect for me. I'm trying to let go of stuff. I'm, yeah. we're, re, we're trying to make a better, better place for ourselves. So, and my husband's all like motivated and I'm like more holding back. So this is, that was perfect. All right. That's great. Well, I love that. And I think, gosh, think how good you feel guys. You ever cleaned out a junk drawer? <laughs> You have you ever just gone with a glad garbage bag in a room and just started going, shh, shh, shh. you know, sometimes the things that are around us weigh us down and yeah. we don't even realize when we do clean up even just a drawer, how good we can feel. So True. think about any of you, anything that you want to clean up in your life, big or small, this would be a sign, right? All right, let's go to Anne. Anne, you ready for this? I'm ready. Rise above your circumstances. <gasps> Rise above your circumstances. This is good for Tammy too. All right, listen up. My life will always be filled with challenges and circumstances. My life and relationships are richer when I rise to the higher level of living by focusing on love and kindness. When I choose the high road, it doesn't mean that I give my power away. It means the opposite. And I'm going to just add, because even though I wrote these, there's only so much space. But think about this. When I choose the high road, I am in my own power, choosing who I want to be and how I want to show up. So flip the switch from feeling stuck to a higher level of living. What would love have me do? Use the high road. You'll feel better about yourself. That's card number. What is it? 
20. All right. So, Anne, how does that speak to you? Wow. It speaks like very, like to the entire me uh, on so many levels. Um, Rising above, you know, sort of the circumstances, be the bigger person, showing, well, expressing gratitude and be sort of who you want to be instead of being sort of just on your auto pilot uh expressing feelings and i had this i had an experience this week um and it's something i'm trying to really work with um in my personal life it's sort of my autopilot is you know when i get uh rejected or the feeling of a rejection or um uh something like that um i tend to sort of hit back with the same kind of um attitude Mm -hmm. But this week, I actually tried to sort of, you know, just uh, take a breath, relax, and then express sort of what I wanted to express and what I wanted to receive instead of just the autopilot uh, reaction. So it resonates a lot. Excellent. I, I totally need to work on this, but it's, I love it. And I love the fact that you say that it doesn't mean that you give away the power Mm-hmm. because you choose to do differently so right. thank you you're welcome Anne. i have to say to you that you know sometimes <clears throat> when we hear let's just say no a lot and i've been hearing it a lot for 20 some years like many of you have been hearing it a lot for periods of time we can give no a new meaning mm-hmm. what if no just meant that situation isn't right at this moment for you. Do you see how we can give it a different meaning rather than, oh, they don't like me. They don't want me. It's not uh, uh, all me centered. What if it's a protection? What if it just means you've got to move on? What if it's strengthening you like Anne is sharing to take on a different perspective, right? One thing I want to share when it comes to business and sales, okay, doesn't matter what company, doesn't matter what you're doing. Remember, your job is to find the people that need your help today. You get where I'm going? I just use these simple five words. Who can I help today? And then I take action in the right direction And guess what? I've never been short of helping people in 20 years. (laughs) They just show up. Do you get what I mean? You are a conduit of love and light. And when you focus your energy in the way of how can I serve? Who can I help? Instead of, wow, they said no to me. You'll feel so much differently. Right? So. Think about it maybe from that perspective. All right. Excellent. Uh, Yvonne. All right. Let's do Yvonne. And then I thought I saw, who did I see? Oh, she might've had to leave. Okay. Who is next after Yvonne? Who went to cart? I think Tracy does. She's looking at me with those little eyes. All right. Here we go. Yvonne, be inspired by others. Compete with yourself. Sometimes I look at what others are doing and I feel tempted to compete. And yet I'm only competing with myself. I will look at achievements of others as an example of showing me what's possible. Wait a minute, where'd I go? Showing me what can be done, what's possible. I think about how I can be better today at being me than yesterday. So flip the switch from focusing on others to measuring my own results. Compare where you are now and where you're headed. All right. You like that one, Yvonne? It's exactly what she's working on, she says. All right, good. Hey, I want to say something about that. So I want you to think about this. Like I've been in this industry 20 some years. Some of you guys might go, well, it's easy for Joan, right? But remember, I've been working at some of these skills a long time. So I want you to think about like, 
I had somebody say to me, well, you don't have any trouble recruiting or, and I said, ask me how long I've been practicing helping others in this manner. Oh, I didn't stop and think about it. Exactly. Cause guess what? I was worse than probably most of you. When I started full of fear, you guys, I had diarrhea for like 48 hours. Are you kidding me? I didn't even want to pick up the phone. I just said that I'm recording, but anyway, it's the <laughs> truth, right? It is the truth. I had a sick stomach. I was physically ill and I had a sales background. I worked at Nordstrom 10 years worth. When I first got into direct sales, I could not even think straight. I couldn't get out of myself because I was so worried what everyone's going to think about me. And I'm going to be honest with you. No one thinks really anything. They don't have time to stop and think about you the way you think about you. Do you get what I mean? And they're going to think it anyway, anyway. So who can I help today? And that's going to really, truly help you get on the road that you want to be on. It's the offense that's driving a business versus I'm back here stuck in fear. Do you guys get where I'm going? All right. Who's next? Oh, wait, Tracy. Here we go. Well, I love everything about me. Tracy, you need to hear that. All right. Self-love is nurtured by me. Getting on these calls, taking good care of you, eating healthy, getting the sleep you need, reading a good book, getting on a podcast, watching YouTube. What do you do for you? I fell asleep drooling last night and I woke up at like three in the morning with a book right over here. I was so excited to get in the motorhome last night and cuddle in. It was cold for me here. Cuddle in and I started reading my book and I thought, I just love my life. Oh, I love this. I did look over and think it'll be nice when there'll be someone right there. <laughs> ha ha. But anyway, I love my life. I love that I get to do that. Those are little things that mean a lot to me. All right. So let's listen. Self-love is uh, nurtured by me. It takes intentional practice to love all the parts of me and myself. I strengthen my self-esteem when I focus on the parts of me that I'm proud of, what I've overcome, and what I am becoming. Flip the switch and say out loud, I love every part of me. You guys should write this down. My energy psychologist had me work on this, you know, a few years back. And I'd say, but I don't love that part about me. She said, then you can find a way to love the part of you that you're working toward. You see? Some of you are going, oh, I don't know if I buy that. Well, buy it. Start loving yourself. All the parts of you. Every bit of it. It's all beautiful. Even your mess. Even your mess. Your mess is all said. Hey, those of you writing down, I want to give you this. There is a, I read this somewhere and I've stolen it many, many times. Focus on the scar, not the wound. Meaning share when you're sharing with people, you ever kind of watch people share, observe how they share on Facebook or on a social platform. You'll see some people that go into the wound and what do you think? All right. I heard enough about that. Jeez. Nah, seems negative. I want to move on. But when we think about the healed scar, right? So watch this. Gosh, I went through a pretty ugly divorce. I've been divorced three times. Shh, no, I think only twice. Actually, I had another situation. My husband passed away. But watch this. It was tough. There were challenges. What I want you to know is what I learned from it. Bup, 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 bup. You see what I mean? We don't stay in the, he's a, you know what? And oh my, and poor me. And, uh, and it was so hard. And I didn't, uh, no one wants to hear that shit. Just so you guys know, 
Nobody gives a shit. I, I hate to say it that way, but they don't. They do want to hear how you pulled through it, how you got through it and where you are today. Like mm-hmm. if you can give someone the littlest bit of hope, that's what they're looking for. Yeah. And you will meet people right today. We'll get off this phone and you'll focus on the scar, the, the, how you've healed, how you're coming through moment by moment of whatever it is you're going through. It doesn't have to be a divorce. It could be anything. And when you do that, you will attract people that need your hope and it will allow you and them to heal. Does that make sense? All right. I got one more card to give. Who's up? Tracy, did you want to share anything? I kind of didn't give you that option there. Sorry. I'm good. Uh, Okay. We're going to give Roberta a card. We haven't seen you, Roberta, for a little while, and yours just flew. I got to hold tight. This is flew way over here. Well, Roberta, I love everything about me. Didn't we just have that here? Isn't that just wild? Look at that. Came out, flew out. That's what Roberta needs to hear. Look at that. Holly, do a screenshot of that and send that to Roberta in her instant messenger, would you? Oh, Jen had her hand up. All right, we're going to go to Jen. Okay, we'll do that. Roberta, you got that. Since we have that card, we'll just move right right on here. All right, Jen, ready? Okay, choose what's right for you and allow others to choose what's right for them. This can be this can be a challenge. I respect much of myself and yet I know it never works when I impose my oh no I said it here let me repeat. I expect much of myself and yet I know it never works when I impose my expectations on on others. Today, I will resist the temptation to change the people in my life. (laughs) I think I might need to hear that. It never ends well. I will turn my expectations of others into appreciation and celebrate the good that I see in them. Flip the switch from trying to change others to appreciating them for who they really are. Accept people and love them unconditionally. It's a good one for me today, too. All right, you guys, Jen, how was that? Do you like that? What do you want to say? Perfect. (laughs) Anything more? (laughs) She's like, it would take way more than one minute. (laughs) Oh, okay. Okay. It's all right. Okay, guys, have a beautiful, beautiful Friday, a beautiful weekend. I will be back here on Monday from the motor home in good old Seattle, Washington. Well, I'm not in Seattle, but I'll be here for till Tuesday. Wait, I want to show you guys one more thing. I got to just show you, you know, how the, how we grandmas are. This was my little, look at this. You guys are going to just love this. This is my little Sophia. Look at her. Oh, oh isn't she so cute? So cute. So beautiful. Oh, oh. Such a cutie. She's she just yeah. got they, they have her in bows every single second. I'm like, doesn't that bother her? They're like, no. I'm like, I might want to go ahead and back up, you know, right? We don't need the grandma's opinion. So anyway. All right, guys, have a beautiful day and happy birthday, Tracy. I mean Lisa. Bye. All right. See you guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.